Science and religion are often seen as polar opposites of how people organize their lives. And to the extent that one of them depends on special revelation and the other on the independent, verifiable, and repeatable measurements, I suppose there's something to that. But as someone who has worked as both a scientist and a minister, I think there's something missing in that formulation, something that gets lost in that framing. In contrast to the idea that religion is always opposed to science, there lies another truth, one that is integral to this faith, to our liberal religious tradition, to this piece of faith that we are part of. It is the reason that this is the only church that I could ever belong to. A church that has spent many hundreds of years asking the question of how we shall understand our faith, our life, in light of research, in light of what science has revealed to us about the operation of this world and universe. Many of you know that there are a lot of Unitarian churches in Romania and Hungary. We have a partner church in Inlaka that some of you have been to. In the Unitarian Church in the city of Oakland, Romania, there's a set of paintings on the ceiling of this 400-plus-year-old church. There are paintings of flowers and other kinds of pastoral scenes, and in the center of them all is a painting that occupies the most prominent place. If it weren't for the fact that it was more than 400 years old, the painting would be barely worth mentioning for it's a painting of the solar system with the sun at the middle. At a time when other churches were vehemently denying the results of Copernicus and Galileo, the people of this small village put their faith and trust in what was observable and repeatable. They cast their lot with what was instead of trying to shoehorn new data into an old model that no longer fit. This is our faith, or at least a part of it, a faith that tells us science and reason help explain the world, help us to understand the world we live in and to live our lives better. By offering reproducible results that can be shared widely across the world. A faith that says, if research says it is not the sun rotating around the earth, but the other way around, well, then we'd better get our textbooks out and make some changes. Because we depend on what is, and what we thought was true, and what turns out to be true, are not the same. So it is for me, particularly at this time of year, that I find myself remembering the way that science and religion have worked together, the way that science has often guided religious observance, especially in its work to keep the calendar correctly. This is a time when we mark the winter solstice. That's the changing of fall into winter, and the beginning of the time when the days lengthen again, a time when it is perhaps easier to see how our ancestors across the world used science to inform their religious observances. From where I stand, human history is a history of the ongoing growth of data and observation. And it's worth remembering which stories we tell about what matters, about what we see in the world around us. Because from a purely technical perspective, this winter solstice that happened two days ago is merely the time when the combination of the Earth's tilt on its axial axis and its rotation around the sun and its elliptical orbit combine to create the day of shortest daylight for the northern hemisphere. In that story, there are many facts, but it is devoid of meaning. It tells us what is, but not what to do about it. And so there is another story that we can tell, a religious one, the way that the winter solstice has long been a religious holiday, a time of feasting, a time 
when our ancestors did the last slaughter of the season. A time to store up food and to fatten ourselves in preparation for the lean months ahead. A time to recognize the power of the cycle of death and rebirth, the ongoing cycles of life. Some of the most, <clears throat> some of the most impressive monuments around the world mark these seasonal changes. Places like Newgrange in Ireland, built in 3200 BCE. It has a window box that lets in light for 17 minutes each year at the sunrise on the winter solstice. Places like Chaco Canyon in the American Southwest or even modern buildings like the Lawrence Hall of Science on the grounds of UC Berkeley where the sunstones mark the setting sun on the winter solstice. And all of this is a reminder that science and religion can indeed work together as partners. But if they are to do so, we must ask ourselves this question. How? How might that happen? What relationship can science and religion have with each other when there is a history of so much animosity. Science can tell us the winter solstice is happening. And not only that, that it will continue to happen. Regardless of what we do, year after year, century after century, for many, many millions of years to come. Traditional religion can tell us about the celebration. Holidays like Yule in Northern Europe, from which we get Yule Tide and Yule Logs, or Dongzi in China and Korea and Japan, or any of a hundred other traditional religious celebrations the world over that celebrate this time of sun returning, but also of the beginning of winter. They tell us the famine months have come. That we will spend the days ahead using up the bounty that we have brought from the harvest of the summer and the fall, the grain and squash and fruit and meat that we have stored away to make it through. So what then does this faith, this Unitarian Universalist tradition teach us? What does it remind us at this time of year? It tells us the cycles of growth and decay are normal. We're all born, and we all die. And that it is in the dying that a new living can occur. And each year, we will be faced with this challenge in our lives. The challenge of life and death. And so in the same way that Solstice tells us that the earth itself is part of a cycle of renewal, of death and rebirth, so too do we gather here in these darkest days of the year to remind each other of something important. We gather to remind ourselves that though the future is not promised to us, it is promised that there will be a future. The sun will come out tomorrow, for it has never gone away. It is only hidden behind the far side of the earth. And the sun will rise again and again and again. Our faith teaches us that if we pay attention, we know more about what to expect and when and how and why. And in that knowing, we can plan and order our lives and prepare ourselves for the months to come. <clears throat>